So in this video, we're going to do something that's a little more applicable to a real game, and that is we're going to start to use triggers. And triggers allow the player to walk into a volume, and once the player is in there, you could check other conditions. Maybe do they have this object? Is it this time of day? Regardless of those other conditions, when the player walks into that vo volume, you can run particular code, and that's the idea behind triggers. So what we want to do to keep it really simple at the beginning is we're going to create collectible items. We're going to have items around our scene, the player runs near them or over them, and they are collected and removed from the scene. What I've got here is a very simple and nothing terribly special. I've created a little bit of a desert island, it's just kind of quick and dirty. I've got some palm trees, I've got some water, and down here I have got Ethan, our standard asset third person character. I've also got a camera, the multi-purpose camera rig. All of this is default and available through the Unity standard assets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to create create, create empty, and I'm gonna name this collectible. Now this is an empty, it's not gonna do me much good. And the reason I'm gonna do that is on this empty object, I'm gonna attach the trigger, I'm gonna attach the flow graph, and then as a child, I'm going to add in the mesh. And that way we can easily swap out the mesh for something more attractive. So to add in the mesh, I'm gonna right click on the collectible, go down to 3D object, and I'm gonna add in a sphere. Now we wanna make sure if we're gonna move things around, we wanna make sure that we're selecting the parent. I'm gonna move that over, and you can see that we're below the terrain, so I'm gonna lift that up. And there we go, we've got our collectible. A few things we wanna do before we go any farther. On our sphere, when we added that, it added a sphere collider, and that's not where we want the sphere collider. We want it to be on the collectible. So I'm gonna remove this component. I'm gonna go back to the parent object, and I'm gonna add in a sphere collider. Now I want this to be a trigger, and the difference between a trigger and a collider is that a trigger, the player or other objects can move through it, whereas a collider acts as if it's a solid object. So I'm gonna click this option here, is trigger, and you can see here the collider, or rather the trigger now, is shown by this green object. Now it may be fine to just have the trigger be the same size as the mesh. We may, may wanna make it bigger, may wanna make it smaller. In our case, we can change that here with our radius. I'm gonna bump this up. There's no reason for it to be super small. Uh, it can be kind of hard to run into. Uh, we wanna make it easy for our player. So with the collider added, and the trigger set as a trigger, we'll now have the option of running the player through this and being able to run some code. But we gotta create that code. So that's what we'll do next. So back in my macros folder, where we have our spinning cube flow graph from an earlier video, I'm gonna right click, create, bolt, and then flow macro. And I'm gonna call this collectible. This is something that I'm gonna reuse over and over again for various collectibles. Uh, and we're just gonna start with this as is. So what we wanna do here is when the player runs through the trigger, we want something to happen. And running through that trigger is an event. So let's go into our flow graph, add a unit, bring up the fuzzy finder, and we wanna look for trigger. If we search for trigger, we should get several different events. So we can see here, we got on trigger exit. So this is an event that will get called or get the code attached to it will uh, run when the player leaves the trigger. That could be pretty useful. On trigger stay, this runs every frame that the player's inside the collider. That can also be really useful, but that can really slow down your game, so you wanna be cautious about using that one. The on trigger enter, this is the one we're looking for in this particular case. This is gonna run code when the player walks through the trigger. So I'm gonna select that event, and you can see there's a couple options here. By default here, we've got self, and so what this is going to be looking for is a trigger on the object that this flow graph uh, is attached to. If you want this to trigger for a different object, you could drag this uh, value node out and uh, select a different object. So here with the on trigger enter, we only want this code to run if it's the player that runs through it. So we need to check and make sure that the collider, and that's this option here, the collider that ran through the trigger is in fact owned by the player. Here in our hierarchy, if we click on the third person controller, you can see that I've already changed the tag to be player. And we need to do that in order for our multi-purpose camera to follow the player. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the tag of this collider. If it is player, then we can do something. So let's drag out this value node. We can search through the collider or I can type in collider tag. And what we wanna do is compare the tag. 
So what this is going to do is going to take in the collider. It's going to send the collider into this unit and it's going to look at the collider's tag and compare it to whatever's typed here below. So in our case, we want to type in player. And if the tag on this collider is equal to player, then we'll send out a true value through this Boolean value node. And if that's true, then we want to do something. So we're going to drag out our Boolean value here and we're going to select branch. This is effectively our if statement, if you will. And we're asking if this is true. So if the compare tag is true, then we can go out this control option. And if it's false, we can go out this way. Well, if it's false, we want nothing to happen. So we're going to leave this part blank and we're going to have this true statement do something for us. Now you might notice here that our control, our compare tag unit is dimmed out and that's because there's no control flow going there. So what we need to do is drag over the control to the compare tag. It's now no longer dimmed. And while this doesn't need the control flow, we're going to add it in there just to keep things nice and pretty. So just to keep things simple, if the collider tag is the player, we want this object to turn off. So we're going to grab this control node over here and we want to turn off this object. So we're going to look up game object and active. So what we can do is set active. We got a couple options down here. We can choose what game object we want to set its active by default itself, which is what we want. And we can choose its value here, whether we want it to turn itself on or turn itself off. Well, we want the object to turn itself off. So we're going to leave this value unchecked. And that's all it's going to take for the player to run through this and the object to turn off and give the appearance that the object was collected by the player. So let's go ahead and add this flow graph to our collectible object. Let's go to collectible and underneath the sphere collider, we're going to add a component and we're going to add a flow machine. And here again, we got to select that collectible uh, flow graph. Again, we can drag it in or you can use the um, little dot to select it. And let's see if this works. As I run through it, you can see that the object disappears and gives the illusion at least that the object's been collected. Now we really haven't done anything to this object when we've collected it. We simply provided the illusion that the object's been uh, collected. We haven't kept track of how many of these we've collected. We haven't added this to an inventory. It's just been turned off. And it's important to realize that that's a lot of what we do in game design. We're creating an illusion. We're not actually collecting this object. In the next video, we're going to look at how to add a sound effect when the object is collected to give a little bit of auditory feedback to the player. Thanks for joining. Hope that was helpful. And we'll see you for the next video in the Bolt tutorial series.